are a melody of something above the earth with physical bodies dancing to the tunes of life, flying through a man-made contraption of time to hopefully find our way using our true north, burning our fuel to shine light through darkness, sometimes forgetting we are the sun, the brightest star of our universe that is the energy which circulates our power to cultivate the flowers of what our thoughts grew. We connect to automate so much, yet our frequency is disconnected. Damn, that is deep. Can you tell I smoked some weed? The key is to hold darkness as the night embraces the moon, to harness the seeds of growth in your hands while attuning to the circadian rhythm of time and release the darkness we hold within to let the moments we encounter darkness create art of its own. Let's talk mental care and plant care. I have been super neglectful of my plants and over the past years, I have observed that there's a direct relationship between me and my plants. I've been struggling with plant care, but truth be told, I've been struggling with self care too. After all, how can I water and nourish my plants if I have already poured myself out into everything else? This is a friendly reminder that you're not alone and it happens to the best of us if you're struggling with tending to your plants. Plant care mirrors depression and anxiety even when you have all the resources for success. Speaking of success, I have been <laughs> writing the Hot Mess Express on a Spirit Airlines budget, but I am determined to make this my journey and not my destination. The feng shui in my Zen Den has totally been off and so have I. Feng shui literally translates to wind and water and I haven't watered my plants nor meditated in longer than I'd like to admit. An ancient poem derives feng shui as the interconnectedness of humanity, earth, and the universe linked by invisible forces. Life is connected and flowing with the environment, so arranging fixtures in the room to create balance and order within the natural world mirror your mind state. I have been working so hard to build my dreams and filling so many buckets along the way, literally and figuratively. I feel I've been challenged every step of the way as I work through my own depth of darkness, building a bridge to connect me to the bright future. I try to always look on the bright side. They say, what goes up must come down. But I say, what tries to go up must also be tried to go back down, especially when you consider natural gravity laws. Every single person is challenged to be brought down, but it's the story of transcending the circumstance that keeps me going. There is so much symbolism around a house of how things fall apart and then get back together. Dwayne was so unamused when our tank flooded this room, yet it's made this corner of the room so magical. The fiddle front and center is actually one of my first rescue plants I purchased, and I can confidently say it was brought back to life and living its best life because we only use fish tank water to water it. This painting symbolizes so much. It reminds me of my relationship with Dwayne, our love for working next to each other, and how we are growing life together. Sometimes it's hard to look at change and not feel overwhelmed with the amount of work ahead, but I keep thinking ahead. As energy flows where attention goes, we are slowly unlocking our manifestations of this image in so many poetic ways. I have so many beautiful things growing around me, but I have been negligent in minding the things that were in desperate need of my attention. Caring for my plants, giving my plants good light, providing nourishment and cleaning the dusty leaves haven't regularly happened because 
I'm not regularly finding time to nourish my soul, drink enough water, get sunshine, dust my shoulders off, and keep self-care in mind. I've learned so many great things about life from the garden. Like, even if nature shakes you down with pesty problems, life can still be fruitful. And if you don't water your seeds a thought, you may not get to see how things unfold. Or if you live long enough, you can wilt away with gloriousness. In the words of Audrey Hepburn, gardening is the greatest tonic and therapy a human being can have. Even if you have only a tiny piece of earth, you can create something beautiful, which we all have a great need for. If we begin by respecting plants, it's inevitable we'll respect people. Even when I can't see my complete vision, gardening is showing me the way. I truly feel I found my passion and a great amount of my depression and anxiety has stemmed from me feeling lost, running against time, burning my energy for work I wasn't passionate about, forgetting that I have the ability to shine as a bright star in the universe, circulating my power to cultivate the flowers of my thoughts. With earth science and ground physics in mind, grounding myself and electrically reconnecting on a natural frequency helps reduce my anxiety and depression. I'm still healing the damage, but breaking through my dark season.